Hey guys, uh, this is Shamdagi. So from today I will basically start a lecture series on algebraic geometry. The in the first session I will discuss about um, the affine space and uh, algebraic subset and basically what is the main theme behind algebraic geometry. What basically we do in here. So what algebraic geometry is. It is basically the study of geometric problem by using algebraic techniques, especially the techniques from commutative algebra. Okay, so let's see what we can do in mainly we do in algebraic geometry. So here, uh, this is R of x1, x2, xn. Okay, set of all polynomials uh, over the coefficient ring R. Now, if we take a subset S of R of x1, x2, xn. So, basically what this S is, S equals to F lambda of x1, x2, xn for all lambda belongs to index set okay so um, this is f this is s now in algebraic geometry we will basically see the zero set of these polynomials okay what is z of s z of s equals to r1 r2 up to r n such that f lambda r1 up to r n equals to 0 sorry this equals to zero for all lambda belongs to index okay so this is basically z of s what is z of s nothing it's just that uh, if we take the polynomial and put the value of r1 r2 r in then uh, that values will be zero so this is just the um, zero set of the polynomials okay and here we will discuss about this set so we want to uh, study the geometry of this set. Now uh, we can think Z of S as a subset of R cross R cross R cross R, right? This is basically n times. So in algebraic geometry, we will basically study of the uh, geometry of the set zero set of S. Okay. Now. We will uh, see what the solution can be. I mean, uh, suppose uh, the coefficients are from set of integers or maybe from a uh, set of real numbers or maybe from a uh, set of complex numbers. Okay. Then uh, suppose if we take a polynomial whose coefficients are from set of integers or from set of real numbers or from set of complex numbers, then what can be the uh, solution of that equation? Suppose I take a uh, equation 2x plus 3 equals to 0. Then x equals to minus 3 by 2. And that x does not belong to set of integers. Right? So we can take a equation. It can happen sometimes that we can take a equation and that equation does not have a solution set in that equation in that space where we take the coefficients for example here we take the coefficients from set of integers right but the solution does not belong to the set of integers we can easily see that but this problem will not occur if we take complex number why because c is algebraically closed field c is algebraically closed field 
now we all know what a algebraically closed field is what is a algebraically closed field if we take a non constant polynomial then uh, whose coefficients suppose here suppose the coefficients are from c then the solution of that polynomial will also exist in that field so if we take c a algebraically closed field then we can see that we can say that zero set of s not equals to phi so what i am trying to say here is that if we take if we take for r an algebraically closed field then if belongs to then for f belongs to r of x1 x2 f2 xn we can say that so we can say that j of f not equals to phi provided provided f is non constant right so if f is non constant then j of f not equals to phi why i use the non constant here uh, you can think it this way that suppose if f is constant or, or i mean a uh, unit element or if f equals to suppose um, in the set of complex numbers suppose f equals to 1 then the zero set will never be phi right so i guess that is clear okay now uh on one side we will write about uh, algebra and on the other side we will write about geometry and we will try to see what happens basically in algebraic geometry okay here this is algebra basically this will uh, be commutative algebra and here we will about geometry we will see about what happens in geometry okay so as we have seen that if it is a algebraically closed field then the zero set will be not equals to phi so let us assume that the field is algebraically closed field okay suppose k of x1 x2 xn so here we will uh, take the polynomial from the algebraically closed field okay and s is a subset of this so uh, here uh, just like i said that k cross k cross k okay so basically this will be n times and the zero set what will be the zero set of this polynomial the zero set of this polynomial will z of s okay and uh, what we will do we will see the geometry of this set okay we will see the geometry of this set we will try to uh, define a topology on this set basically we will see later that this z of s uh, satisfies the properties of a closed set okay and then we will give a topology and then we will come to the affine space okay now let's uh, start one by one uh, so from so from initially i will discuss about uh, what is algebraically algebraic subset algebraic subset there are uh, various ways where we can uh, discuss about algebraic subset okay a subset of a n basically the main theme will be same but we can write it in various ways a subset of a n is 
said to be algebraic subset if it is of the form if it is of the form j of s where s is a subset of k of x1 x2 xn so what this says that a subset of a n is said to be algebraic subset a subset of a n is said to be algebraic subset if it is of the form j of s we can say it in this way that a subset y of a n is said to be algebraic subset if y equals to j of s okay so basically this thing j of s is a algebraic subset now i have uh, defined algebraic subset okay now we will see what are the properties that what are those properties that j of s is satisfying okay so i will uh, discuss one by one those properties and then we will see that um, this uh, j of s is a um, closed set basically what happens that so we, we have defined that j of s is algebraic set, subset okay now we will see that uh, union of two algebraic set is an algebraic set second this algebraic set is closed under finite intersection third phi set and the whole space also belongs to the algebraic set okay uh, so these are the basic results and uh, this will imply that this algebraic set is a closed set okay so since it is a closed set its complement will be open set so from here the concept of topology gives basically we can put topology on this set i will come to that later okay now uh, let's see what are the properties that this set satisfy okay. so first property i think this is very interesting first is that j of 0 equals to kn uh this is pretty clear right so i'm not explaining it uh second is that j of k of x1 x2 xn equals to phi so here if i take the polynomial set all the polynomial sets collections of all polynomials over k then constant polynomials will also come and we know that they does not have zero set they have zero set is phi right so that's why i said that zero set of k of x1 x2 xn equals to phi okay now number 3 j of s1 union j of s2 union j of s n equals to equals to j of s1 s2 up to s n now number 
okay so j of s1 union j of s2 union j of sn equals to j of 4 now uh, intersection of j of s alpha equals to j of union of s alpha so what we observe that what i have said already that uh, what is this j of s1 union j of s2 union j of sn so suppose this is uh, so this basically union is closed under finite union okay union is closed under uh, this set is closed under finite union and this is closed under arbitrary intersection so this forms a closed set okay so what we can say that uh, this forms actually this satisfies the properties of a closed set so j of s becomes a closed set so what i can say that k n became k n become topological space i am writing this in short topology topo space if this becomes um, topological space if we denote the algebraic subsets to be closed denote algebraic subsets to be closed okay subsets to be closed here we have seen that this j of s is a algebraic subset they satisfies the property of a closed set so k n became a topological space okay now let's come to the next idea now uh, we will discuss about affine space okay so what is this affine space and uh, we will see this one by one okay now uh, till now what we have seen that kn became a topology uh, topological space if we declare j of s to be closed set okay now here a k n A K N is called affine space over K. Imply K N. along with this topology so basically what i am trying to say that uh, suppose uh, how i will denote a k n okay so k cross k cross k cross k n times along with this topology along with this topology so actually i'm writing this way so that it will be easy for you to understand so what is this that k n along with this topology is called affine space okay so k n along with this topology this basically we will denote as a k n okay and k n along with this topology will be called affine space so first we have seen algebraic subset and then we have seen affine space okay now uh, there is one exercise okay any if you uh, i will request you to try to solve this if you don't get it or you are unable to solve it then you can ask me in the comment section i will try to uh, explain it okay so basically what this says this says that any f belongs to k of x1 x2 up to xn gives a continuous map gives a continuous map again i am writing in short form gives a continuous map from a k n to a k we have to uh, prove it that any f belongs to k x1 x2 xn gives a continuous map 
from AK into AK1. Okay. Basically, you had you the idea that you need to use that is uh, the that the inverse image of closed sets are closed. Okay. So basically, you have to take a closed set. You need some little bit work here actually. Um, basically, you need to take some closed set from AK1. And uh, then you will prove that the inverse image of that closed set are closed. Okay, so that is the thing that you can try. Now uh, we are almost done, but I will try to give you some, uh, some, I mean some, what I can say this, uh, some uh, basic, actually basic thing that is uh, very important and very interesting as well. Basically, what we will see that uh, when we are dealing with algebraically closed field and the ring of polynomials, uh, the coefficients are coming from the field, then uh, zero set, basically in the zero set, we will, dealing with, uh, we will be dealing with finite number of polynomials. Okay, how? Uh, I will explain it to you. Suppose, again, here this is commutative algebra and okay, let me do it in a new page. Here, this is this side. This is commutative algebra, and this side, this is geometry. I am doing this so that it can be easy for you to understand. Okay. Uh, so, suppose S is a subset of K of x1, x2, up to xn. Now, S. Now, if I take the set generated by S, that will be an ideal. Okay. So, ideal generated by the uh, polynomial ring S. Uh, okay. And we can call it the smallest ideal generated by the set S. That is basically the smallest ideal generated by the set S. That is basically intersection of J where J contains S. Okay. So, what uh, you can easily verify that z of s equals to z of s of s basically the same thing right here uh, this is the ideal generated by s and if we can see that the zero set of though all those polynomials will basically be same so uh, this thing is very interesting okay actually by using this idea we can uh, we can explain more things okay let's see what we can explain so if okay but first uh, let me tell you about hilbert spaces theorem okay hilbert basis theorem and another um, uh, interesting thing here is that k is a field right so K is a field, so every ideal of K will be finitely generated. Okay, every ideal of K finitely generated. K is so K is Noetherian. What Hilbert basis theorem says, HBT that if K is Noetherian. If K is Noetherian ring, then K of X1, X2 up to Xn is Noetherian ring. Okay. That is the ideals will be finitely generated. Okay. Now, if the ideals are finitely generated, S we have taken. So, S will be finite. Right. So, basically no matter what yes i will give to you even if the set even if there are infinite number of polynomials right suppose s has infinite number of polynomials but we have seen that j of s equals to j of s okay so what this tell us this tell us that if we study about this for this zero set we are basically studying about this zero set as well and this set we can see that S is an ideal and here by Hilbert basis theorem we can say that this ideal will be generated by finitely many polynomials. 
so basically we are dealing with finitely many polynomials okay so in algebraic geometry uh, this is very interesting part that uh, no matter how much polynomials there is you are in the set of s you are basically dealing with finitely many polynomials okay so we are kind of getting we are kind of getting a um, uh, correspondence right here uh, there is a s set and we are getting z of s okay so basically sorry basically s to z of s so from ideal to algebraic subset right in the next we will see that we will get algebraic subset to ideal okay and then we will end our lecture so how we will see that uh, that is again i will write try to write it this way this is algebra and this is geometry geometry there is some issue So here uh, I will first discuss about ideal. Okay, we have already seen that S is a subset of R of x1, x2, xn. Now, what is I of t? Okay, here uh, in this geometry side. Here in this geometry side, suppose, suppose here I take, suppose here I take uh, T, okay, T which is a subset of A, K, N, okay, so what is a k n a k n is affine space and t is a subset of that now uh, i of t is ideal of t ideal of t how we will define it we will define it all those f belongs to k of x1 x2 up to x in such that f of t equals to 0 for all t belongs to capital T. So here we have taken an algebraic set and here we getting an we are getting an ideal. Okay. So basically this is also kind of a correspondence. Previously we take the ideal and from where we got the zero sets that is algebraic set here we take t and then we are getting i of t now why i of t is ideal you can easily check that i mean what i defined that all those functions which will go to zero for all t belongs to capital t okay those polynomials that will goes to zero for all t belongs to capital t so this set is definitely an ideal okay you can check the easily check the properties so basically here i get algebraic subset to ideals now uh, these are certain these have certain properties actually properties so property number 1 is that s1 contained in s2 that imply z of s1 contained in z of s2 and property number to uh, prove that t1 contained in t2 that will imply that i of t2 contain i of t1 try to prove this property okay um, just think this way that if t1 contained in t2 right that means that 
this is basically the set of zero sets okay now i of t2 what is i of t2 i of uh, t2 contained in i of t1 that means more functions vanish on t1 right uh, this is one of the interesting hint that you can get that uh, i of t1 means more function vanish on t1 okay here uh, t1 is the smallest set t2 is the bigger set that is t2 containing t1 and here since it is bigger uh, so we are saying that more function function since t1 is smaller so basically more function can vanish on t1 okay you can think this way and number three is that i of z of 